think he already muted himself. But anyway, uh, um, but just remember also the next week is your last week uh, to get our really um, discounted pricing for Forex Analytics. I don't even like discounting Forex Analytics, but uh, but but Stelios thinks we should just give it away for free. So whatever. Uh, no comment, uh, you, Stelios? You never, you, never listen, you never listen to any of my suggestions, do you? <laughs> I know, I don't. No, but, um, but really our pricing is, uh, if you guys don't know, um, we, we discounted like ridiculous amount. So it's basically buy one month, get one month free, buy six months, or get buy four months, get for six months. So you get two months free and then price at eight, you get 12 months. So you get four months free uh, on the annual. And we only do that like, once a year um, that we, we've been offering Forex Analytics for two years and I think we've done it one other time which probably will end up being a you know every year we'll we'll offer some sort of you know steep discount like this but it's only for the beginning of the trading season that's the reason why we do it is because we know that everybody's coming back for uh, for the hall, for the fall you know fall trading fall and spring trading so we want to uh, make sure that you guys all are part of the forex analytics community anyway okay enough about that um, a couple of things I want to talk about so you know as far as the, the the euro goes this is a really big concern of mine and I and actually I had an order to short the euro dollar uh, when we got to 118.50, and and I'll, and the reason why I was going to short it up here, a because if you look at the dollar index, the dollar index was coming to its 38% uh, retracement, which is right here. The euro already surpassed it, the 38% retracement. But I figured if the dollar index was going to get to its 38% retracement, that was going to put the euro at 118.50. So I was going to short it there regardless. Um, we didn't make it, obviously, so my order did not get tripped. Um, however. Uh, this is a major, and let's you know, let's be clear here. It's a major 38% retracement in in the uh, in in the euro dollar. Uh, I had everybody and their mother's brother's uncle yesterday, and there's a couple of people that were like, "No, this is where you know, this is the the dollar is going to strengthen here." Blake, we seem to have lost you. Let's see, you see muted? Hey, oh, hey you're can back. you hear me? Okay. Hey, hey Blake. Blake. Yeah. Was, was that your hey, connection you... or? Yeah, it's my, that yeah, it's. It's my connection, and I've got to I've got to reset it. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of an issue here. Can you guys take it for like three minutes? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Yeah. sure, sure. Thanks. I'll be I'll be right back. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, the, you know, from my part, the um, obviously the main thing that's happened in the last 24 hours is the development in the UK, and uh, you know, I I was thinking about this uh, just when May May uh, did her um. Uh, made her, uh, you know, said what she said a few minutes ago. You know, a couple of days ago, the UK side said that, um, you know, we're not going to accept the uh, the proposal for the Irish border. Then the Europeans yesterday said, no, we're going to reject the whole checkers plan. And uh, and now May is saying, you know, uh, we're not going to change tack. And, you know, this is how we're going to go. It, I maintain my view that this is, just another, you know, it's a game of chess, what they're doing. I don't see any logic in them not eventually agreeing to something. I really don't. Obviously, it can happen. You know, stranger things have happened in this world, but it just makes no sense to me. So I think this is just a, you know, a game of chicken or not chicken, a game of chess, actually. And, um, you know, let's see what the next few days uh, bring. But the, the, it seems that the main, the main event is going to be the meeting in November. I think it's the second or third November that they've said that it's going to be the big meeting. Anyway, but that's by, that's by interesting. Way, you know, I, I I got the screen to to show. You know, I wanted to say that first of all, um, EURUSD has told that you know to 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 resume from where Blake has uh, you know was left. EURUSD uh, is temporarily stalling at the thirty-eight point two. Um, oh, uh, by the way, let me mention, I promised it yesterday and, you know, we did as we promised actually within one hour. Um, we had the uh, blog post ready, so you can have a look at it here. 
it's if you go to Forex Analytics and you click blog, it's you know it's it's a free blog uh, area. This is the latest blog post, Euro USD, where to from here. So you know um, if, if you haven't already read it, I suggest that you go ahead and do it. Um, now, having to do with the Euro USD, uh, we we do see that it's stalling at the 38.2. Personally, um, you know a pullback, of course, you know can always happen. Uh, but as long as we remain above this uh, neckline of the inverted head and shoulders formation, um, you know, nothing changes having to do with my thesis. Blake said that he was looking for 118.50. Um, I agree with him. This is the first natural area of uh, resistance following 118.40, actually, in my opinion, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so this is the next natural area of resistance once we bridge through this 38.2. Um, but, you know, um, I like more the uh, confluence of resistances that we have at 119.30, it's the 50% fib. The 200 daily moving average is uh, just like 15 pips higher than that. But you know, every single day that we spend below it, it's converging to that level. So I'm guessing that in a few days, you know, they're, they're going to be confluencing almost exactly. Um, you know, if, if you're looking even for higher targets, there is also a very nice confluence of resistances up here. This is actually a triple confluence of resistances near. 121 because it's the 61.8 percent fib of the move low and it's also the um inverted head and shoulders formations uh target um and you know this has been in the past um a, a horizontal support resistance area of course you know we have to take it one step at a time um i'm not sure at all that we're going to make it but uh, up there but to be honest i have a decently high conviction um that even if we get a pullback now uh, we should um uh you know reclaim uh these highs the 117.80 high and actually make it even higher than that so uh, i still believe that uh, the euro usd is uh, going to make it to uh, higher prices but of course that doesn't mean that it's going to happen immediately or that it's going to happen like on monday right it, it, it's more or less obvious it's not going to happen today but that doesn't seem much okay now having to do with usd swiss let's have a look at it uh, until Blake is there. If you remember, I was very clear about it. Um, I consider the secondary bound to 97.50 to probably be, um, uh, you know, another failed attempt. And indeed, that attempt, you know, failed because 97.50 was a very strong um, area of uh, resistance. We also had the 200 daily moving average. And I said that once we fail again from the 97.50, uh, and we retest the 96050 area. I doubt it that it's going to hold, and that's the case. We're actually approaching now the 61.8% fib in the USD Swiss. Uh, but I do believe that there is a decent chance that we're going to make it even lower to the 9450 area. So you know, uh, they're highly correlated, invertly correlated. Um, even if I have a look at the USD Swiss, I also don't think that it's done um, selling off uh, here. So. Um, you know, that is what I believe about the euro and the um, uh, Swiss. Now, having to do with the pound, you know, I had an initial target in mind, 133. We actually uh, more or less made it there yesterday. Um, you know, I didn't take profit because anyhow, I had like a, uh, you know, a small position and we're getting a very nice rejection from there. So, you know, I expect to see how the day is going to close. You know, if we get like a very bearish candle like the one we are getting now, I, I'll probably take profit from that. Uh, small position because, you know, I don't like getting uh, such a big rejection at quite a nice confluence of resistances, right? Now, that doesn't mean that we can move higher from there. I actually thought by seeing this uh, strong, um, uh, you know, breakout from this uh, channel that initially looked corrective that perhaps, you know, we're going to get an extension higher. And, you know, it's not impossible for that to happen uh, still, but uh, as I said, I don't like the fact that after making it back there uh, to 133, we seem to be getting rejected, you know, so emphatically today. So, you know, who, who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, Blake, hey, you're back, mate. Yeah, I'm back. Hey, um, uh, and I'll take over for the next few minutes before the Canadian Absolutely. data. But, um, but th thanks, thanks for covering. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to finish up my thoughts um, on on um, on the euro dollar. And 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 give give some on the Canadian before the Canadian data. I have to roll for that. But um, but I appreciate you guys stepping in. I have uh, um, I, my connection was pretty poor. It needed to be reset, and I was having it was becoming problematic. So 
So, uh, so thank thank you very much. All right. So um, anyway, I wanted I wanted to finish up my thoughts here on the euro and where I was earlier, and and basically what I was trying to tell you guys is I was trying to sell the euro dollar on a move to one eighteen fifty if it if it got there. It did, it obviously didn't get there. Um, because we are at a 38% longer term retracement, but the dollar index still has a little bit of distance to go before we, we reach the 38%. So that's why I was, you know, go ahead. I was, you know, going to try to um, pick up the euro short, um, get the, get long the dollar as we reach down here, but, but we, we didn't. And um, the one issue that I, you know, and I was trying to illustrate before I got rudely interrupted by my, by my, um, my connection is that uh, the market is probably um, you know well the 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 Twitter sphere was extremely extremely uh, bearish the euro and the euro can could obviously go a little higher I, I you know I, I still think the euro can um, but what, what what is going to really destroy um, anybody who's on the long side is, is is if we make a move back below 11720 if, if we if we make a move back down here this is where you know you, you're gonna find out that you're probably wrong and one of the one of the bigger risks I think associated with with being short the dollar right now is if the market um, you, you know and I don't know if Steve talked about the S&P but we're in a we're in an ascending wedge here and if, if we reach... no Blake I just I just spoke sorry so you know I just spoke a little bit about the cable and I spoke about the euro and the Swiss so those okay. are the only ones I go with. okay sounds good I'll, I'll let you really expand on this but um, in, in a little while but the S&P you know if, if we if we reject here and we start making our way back to you know 2900 the question is you know will the dollar respond in a bullish manner and I think it may I think that the dollar could actually you know be a risk off um, beneficiary if you will and so uh, the, the 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 risk of the euro slumping back down to 117 or maybe even lower if the market becomes a little risk averse I think is quite possible so that that's another thing that the euro dollar you know has going against it on it moving higher because you might see you know the pairs like the euro yen start to really you know uh, fall apart at the seams especially after such a big rally you know if we see some risk aversion the the euro yen um, you know could see a quite a substantial pullback which would give the dollar an underlying bid the dollar and the yen uh, one one other thing I wanted to mention um, just because we have Canadian retail sales and inflation data coming up and by the way uh, we are expecting a bounce back or a, a pullback in inflation I think it's a pullback in inflation yeah CPI um, we, we register really uh, you know rock solid number obviously economists have brought down expectations because they, they they feel that there's going to be a reversion back to the mean in CPI um, and uh, and and also retail sales um, you know pretty pretty we're expecting a pretty big beat here in retail sales but um, if retail sales and CPI come in worse than expected that the risk of the dollar Canadian right now is from a technical perspective is that we're you know we're finding support at a lot of lows here this is a this is the low from from mid-august um, also I have to mention this and this is this this is one of the other things that I'm paying very close attention to if you you notice this big multi-year trend line that was broken right this this goes back you know 2016 um, to where we're currently at you know roughly I'm probably adjust that line a little bit um, we have a ton of support down here at the 200 day moving average which comes in around let's, let's say roughly 128.60 okay lot of support down here um, this, and, and, and I actually have a bid in the dollar Canadian down here uh, just so you guys know I, I've had it out there for the last couple of days I'm like okay I'm looking for channel support if we get down I thought we might flush through it with some NAFTA news earlier in this week it, my, my order is still out there um, but as you as you can see it it's gone untouched now the the risk here is that we're holding these lows if, if the data comes in you know worse than expected plus we're seeing a little bit of lift in the dollar plus we're seeing a little bit of um, the market give back some of these gains that we had and um, you know if, 
if people look at Friday as you know kind of a, a day to take some profits off the table, we could see and and again if the if if we have some weak Canadian data coming up, uh, we could see the do dollar Canadian pivot off here. I, I don't know how close we are to a NAFTA deal. There was this article in the Globe and Mail uh, yesterday, which was a really, um, you know, interesting article about, you know, a, a, a deal in, with NAFTA. It's like, just take it. Whatever deal you can get, take it. Do what Mexico did and just take it. And this is in the Canadian, you know, um, Globe and Mail. I think it's Toronto's, I think it's Toronto's newspaper, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, um, um, because, you know, our, or Canadian exports uh, uh, to the U.S. account for a huge percentage of Canadian GDP. So it's like you can't risk uh, not doing a deal. But the the question is, is you know, it, it, will one get done? And is is it is, you know, is there still going to be some negotiating moving forward? And um, you know. I don't know how close we are to a NAFTA deal, but if, if there if there's any any whiff of uh, prolonged um, negotiations and 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 a deal, you know, kind of the risk of not getting done anytime in the near future, the dollar Canadian could race right back up to 131 without much of an issue. I don't think that um, I don't think that that's you know out of I don't think that would be actually uncalled for based on the negotiations that we've seen between Trudeau and Trump and uh, even though uh, Ms. Freeland's been very you know tried to been very amicable you know um, ultimately she is uh, she's got a report back to you know uh, you know Prime Minister Trudeau so anyway uh, you gotta you gotta watch the support as long as 128 uh, 12885 holds uh, the 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 risk of a bounce back to 130. I think is relatively high at this point, especially with you know yeah you know, a little bit of profit taking in the stock market on Friday, um, dollars catching a little bit of a bid. Uh, if we get some weak Canadian data, we'll be trading right back up here again. And uh, speaking of which, we have data in three minutes, so I'm going to pass it back over to Steve and uh, Stelios. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, for for covering that few minutes for me, I, so I could reset everything. Um, thank and, you, Blake. Uh, hey, thank you, guys. And and also, I want to mention hey, uh, if, if you haven't uh, if you haven't uh, visited our sponsor. Forest Park FX, make sure you do so. Uh, they, they, they're a great company for us to work with. I know they're a great company for any, everybody, every one of our traders that have used them that are in our chat room and in our community um, really has enjoyed the process because, you know, if you're trading for yourself, um, why aren't you getting uh, reimbursed for Forex Analytics or why aren't you getting cashback rebates? Uh, that, that was the question that I'd have to ask all of you. So if you need assistance with that, um, make sure you visit our um, our, our site and then um, connect through them through the reimbursement program link and just ask them questions about um, how you can uh, benefit from it. So anyway, um, they are our sponsors, Forest Park FX, and mm -hmm. tell them we sent you. All right, thanks guys. Bye bye, Blake. See you later. So bye, okay, yeah, yeah, Friday. <laughs> DJ. Um, yes. So, um, we are monitoring the data. We expect uh, retail sales and CPI from uh, Canada. So that's why I'm monitoring the USD CAD. It should the data should be out within any second. So let's see what we get and what kind of a reaction uh, you know the market is going to produce. Um, yeah. Um, and later nice. on, later on we have the US PMIs, but that's in. Uh, that's yeah, that's hour. after after yeah. the webinar actually. Yes, yeah, that's no we, we're uh, going to cover that on the. Yeah. Oil oil is doing well today, so that might be giving. Yeah, we're going to have a look at the oil. Uh, let's have a look at the data first. All right. Any second. Okay. Uh, the, okay. Yes, we, we, okay. So C CPI yes. as expected. Yeah. Retail sales even stronger than expected. We expected the 0.6 um, uh, percent. Uh, we got a 0 0.9 percent increase. Um, CPI at 1.7 year on year 
but the month on month is a little bit weaker. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, that's it actually. Um, so yes, okay, a little bit better uh, core retail sales. Uh, other than that, I I would have to say that more or less it, it's an event we're seeing. Uh, you know, the CAD strengthening a little bit, which makes sense because the data was, you know, somewhat better than expected. Um, as I was saying the other day, there is a very nice. Uh, triple confluence of uh, supports down here at 128.50, 128.60. We're almost there. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking to see if we're going to get some kind of a reaction uh, from that level. I mean, we, we're just like uh, 50 pips away. So let's see, first of all, if we make it there, which we probably will. And, you know, what happens from there? Until that happens, selling uh, the USD card, you know, almost at support makes no sense, in my opinion. On the other hand, buying it, you know, without any proof that uh, the move lower is done also is, isn't that prudent. So I, I think, you know, if you're not involved, you know, we need to be a little bit more patient. Now, um, you mentioned crude. So, okay, let's have a look at it. Crude, as you see, is still bumping its head on this 61.8% fib um, from the corrective move lower. Um, so, you know, it, it looks quite strong. There's no question about it, but it keeps failing to penetrate through this uh, 71 7120 um, area. Once it does, I believe that you know there, there, there is a very high probability that uh, we, we we can say that uh, you know the corrective move lower is over and you know we have a, a resumption of the uptrend. But uh, I'm not I'm not sure. I doubt if that's going to happen today. At least not from what we're seeing. Um, I'll go through metals very fast because you know uh, nothing really has changed since yesterday. Gold is consolidating today. In general, it has spent now uh, several weeks consolidating in, in the uh, area that surrounds uh, 12.05. Um, I still believe that you know another push higher is likely. Silver is overperforming in the short term. It's actually now testing the 14.30 uh, area. I think that if we make it above there, uh, silver will have the, uh, the uh, you know um, some open space to extend higher. Why not even a dollar almost higher? Uh, I, I see no real resistance to 1520. So gold was overperforming for a period of time, but you know the last few days we see uh, silver uh, overperforming. Um, having to do with copper, um, I, I warned yesterday that that consolidation at the 273 area was probably a bullish one. Uh, we just needed confirmation, and that's actually what happened. We we broke above it. Uh, in my opinion. That tells me that we're going to make it to 294. So, you know, I had said plenty of times that once we breach this resistance, um, I think that we're going to retest this um, uh, double tops uh, bottom, which was at 294. Uh, and, you know, I, I see uh, that, you know, the move is already uh, looking quite healthy. Uh, that reversal day that we got. Um, on the announcement overnight, on the announcement that uh, the uh, US would impose more tariffs, initially had copper selling off, and it was looking like copper would break through this triangle, and would, this would end up being like a continuation formation. But once it snapped back and we actually closed above it, it was more than obvious that that was like a false, um, uh, you know, a, a false start to the downside. And usually, those are very good indications that you know the um, the instrument is going to move the other way. And now that we cleared to 74, I think that the chances are extremely high that we're going to make it to at least 294. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm constructive in the short term. There's no question about it. And um, palladium is just, you know, it keeps doing its, its thing. Uh, you know, very strong, very impulsive move. But as I said, buying it up here doesn't make much sense. I would really want to see a pullback towards 1,000. Um, I think that the whole move lower was corrected, probably like a double zigzag or something. Um, so I think a pullback to 1,000 would be a great opportunity uh, for somebody to be uh, long palladium. I think it's by far the most bullish of uh, the metals. Okay, just just before I leave palladium, just look at the daily RSI. It's now hitting 80. Okay, so we went from a daily daily RSI like below 30. Uh, to roughly 25 to 80, which that's not a small feat, right? Uh, and I think that says a lot. <clears throat> now, um, having to do with um, uh, indices, 
uh, let me say that uh, I, I'm still monitoring this <clears throat> this ascending channel. I think that we're uh, reaching uh, you know some interesting levels uh, to look for a pullback. Um, one one level I'm monitoring is this confluence of the 161.8 percent extension of this little corrective move uh, with uh, the ascending channels resistance. That's roughly at 2947 at the moment. So 2947 definitely a level of interest. Um, let me also um, say here that I've had for years this uh, Andrew's pitchfork, you can see here, with the 200% extension of the pitchfork, which as you see, it has done an amazing job in uh, actually um, uh, pointing to extremes and the price action while we're in this, you know, wild uptrend has, you know, has kept reverting, reverting near uh, the medium, uh, the median line. Uh, every time we get to extreme level. So when we got like, uh, you know, that sell off uh, that we did in uh, 2016, we actually um, very briefly penetrated through, um, you know, the 200% um, of the uh, pitchfork support. Uh, now, on the other hand, when we had that euphoria phase at the end of last year and until January, we briefly penetrated through the 200% um, uh, of, uh, you know, the bull side. And we then reverted to you know the medium line of um, the pitchfork, and now we're approaching once again uh, those very overbought levels, right? So uh, I do think that the closer we get uh, to 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 this um, uh, trend line resistance, um, the, the higher the likelihood that we're going to see a snapback move. Okay, and as I said, if you look you know at the technicals from a shorter term perspective, I'm monitoring this ascending channel. Um, you know we're we're getting very close to retesting it. We also have that 161.8 percent extension of this little uh, pullback move. So I do believe that we're going to get a nice uh, opportunity uh, to sell it in the short term um, for a corrective move. Now, having to do with Nasdaq, oops, sorry. Having to do with Nasdaq, obviously the Nasdaq, uh, you know, has refrained from uh, registering new highs for some time now. Um, we uh, we haven't reclaimed the highs, and I'm not even sure we're going to do it. I mean, if the thesis that the S&P doesn't have much more upside before seeing some kind of a pullback is correct, there is a decent chance that the Nasdaq actually is not going to reclaim the highs. And these are the kind of divergences that I you know that I that I like uh, very much because you know they they often point to turns in the market. Oh, Gregor, you're with us. Yes. You're talking oh, well, so much, I cannot even join. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just with you. first of all, is it your birthday today? Yes, how you know? Happy birthday. Uh, okay, I, I wasn't supposed to say, but your wife told me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to the company, mate. Um, okay, looking forward to, to hearing your perspective and uh, looking forward to seeing what you consider like, I know we, we've had quite choppy markets, now we've got yeah. some acceleration in dollar sell-off. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what do you believe that in the upcoming days is probably uh, a good opportunity, what do you think is looking better, you know, for the next few days? Well, uh, I, I, I see uh, US stock market and markets in general in a very strong uptrend. Uh, so I'm considering some yen crosses that could be interesting for more upside, especially... Uh, I just like, passed you the screen, by the way. Yes, yes, I see. Just a second. Okay. Um, so if we look at the stock market, uh, the S&P 500, uh, as you pointed yourself, there is uh, an idea of a pullback that may occur in the near future. Probably next week we may see signs of a new turn lower in this way four. Um, but I'm still tracking this as temporary recovery, as you can see here from uh, this February low. So actually, this can still be seen as a free wave corrective movement as part as wave B that belongs to a bigger 
corrective pattern. But what is really important is that this trend remains bullish until we see five waves up. Okay, so even if this is bearish interpretation, there is room for more upside after a wave for pullback. Uh, also, I see German DAX reversing from some very nice FIP support levels. Okay. Yeah. So not only that, from the neckline of a huge head and shoulders formation. So that was, you know, I, I kept saying that that was the line in the sand for the bulls because if if actually the DAX broke through 11,800, I believe that everybody would be running for the exit. Yes, exactly. And actually, maybe we will not see this neckline broken if we consider that this can actually be um, just a triangle in progress. Yes, of course, of course, of course. So, uh, as long as we stay above there, the bullish interpretation should be respected because, because let's be honest, it is a huge up there, right? Yes, yes, sure, of course. And uh, what, why I favor uh, this triangle interpretation is because this reversal that we have seen in the last week or so has occurred from these very nice FIB levels. After seven legs of a pullback, and this is seven leg structures represents corrective structures, okay? So it was the first zigzag and the second zigzag with the X in the, in the middle. But this recovery is very strong, clearly acting as an impulse, which already uh, is trying to break out uh, the upper trend line of this recent downtrend channel. So I think that we may see a further upside here in a new free wave uh, recovery for a wave B towards the upper trend line here, as you can see. So um, with S&P 500 showing room for more upside after wave four pullback, I think that we may also see more upside after wave B pullback on DAX as well. Um, so generally speaking, I remain bullish on DAX here longer term, but of course, this is a, a triangle in a fourth wave. It will take time before real major breakout may take us uh, to new all-time highs. Uh, but for the short term, as I said, there is a chance for more upside after pullback. So what I really like is ASEAN. Uh, so ASEAN, as you can see here, it probably completed a five wave decline also with an ending diagonal here in the fifth wave with a very clear reversal this week that also take us not only above this red uh, trend line resistance of an ending diagonal but also above way for swing high as well so this is normally or theoretically speaking confirmation that ending diagonal has finished in such case when ending diagonal is finished it should, it should take us back to the starting point, which was at 84.50. So I think there is opportunity to catch some upside here. So when we will see a pullback, some healthy pullback on stocks, on the S&P 500 and DAX, that's when I would love to be long as the end. So I will be tracking different interpretations here. The first one is that we will see a pullback into wave four. Okay, so it depends how constructive this uh, upcoming correction would be. If we we'll see a very slow price movement, then I would be confident that this is actually is way four. If we will speaking, see a much speaking speaking of which by the way you said you like some game pairs and it's it's very clear here that you're looking for more upside in the Aussie uh, um, in the Aussie uh, yen. But let me tell you something else. Seeing the Aussie Kiwi breaking down from an ascending channel and seeing the Kiwi Yen breaking from a very nice confluence of resistances, and when when you switch the Kiwi Yen, I, I want to show you exactly what I mean. Uh, yes, for some I have reason, you, so I, I exactly know what I, you're trying to say. Yes. Yes, I, I would favor more upside in the Kiwi Yen. I have to tell you. Yes, but actually, uh, you you could be right actually because if Aussie uh, against New Zealand or will will be moving lower then obviously uh as you said this pair could be better um, could be in better shape but they're both looking very good at this stage while we are trading casual. Not, not only that uh, Greg, uh, keep in mind kiwi yen is also besides breaking that very nice trend line that you're showing there which i'm also monitoring i'm actually monitoring if you take the parallel of that trend line resistance just take the parallel of that trend line resistance yeah yeah clone that one yeah okay as you see it was also yeah that that's it it was also for for a period of time a channel and not only that we also got a double bottom 
right? Yeah. So we're currently, at the same time that we're breaking through this trend line resistance, we're also breaking and we're also triggering a double bottom formation. So anyway, I slice it. I like Kiwi again for more upside. Of course, after a pullback, because we've already seen like quite quite strong move higher. But I do like Kiwi again. I have to admit to that. Yes, actually, but it has it's a little bit stronger. But when looking at the structures, they are basically in the same pattern. But of course, you never know. Maybe Aussie will surprise negatively, and we will see a move to the downside. A little bit deeper than on New Zealand dollar against the Japanese yen. And if I take a look here, also uh, on the hourly chart, if you want, uh, there's also a very strong lag up, especially since uh, third wave, wave and back. Yeah, so clearly this fits to be a, like a wave three, so wave four pullback, and then watch out for more gains uh, as well here. So that definitely you highlighted a very valid point here about New Zealand dollar to be maybe better, especially if I take a look here at Aussie dollar against the New Zealand dollar, you can see here that we are moving to the downside after this. Exactly, that's the chart I was referring to. Yeah. Yes, and maybe we'll see even an aggressive sell-off here if we consider a big picture, okay? But this one is a little bit scary. So let's stick, no, to, indeed it is. <laughs> let's stick to this and be aware of potential continuation lower while we are breaking this while we are trading below this trend line but maybe this is not story about the Aussie or New Zealand dollar when we are tracking yen crosses but it can be just because risk is on so it can be story for very weak Japanese yen so no matter how you look maybe in either case trade could work out as I said on ASEAN and New Zealand yen as you said uh, we should be looking and watching pullbacks next week because I think there can be uh, opportunities on the long side, especially with uh, risk on that we are seeing right now. So Speaking of that, I remember that both of us were expecting an initial move higher in the USD yen. I really find it very hard to read USD yen. The only thing I knew is that it, it, it was a lot more likely to break higher because it, it was trading within a descending channel. Um, but, you know, the only thing I could say about it is that, okay, if it breaks higher from that, it should retest that 113, like 17 high or whatever it is. Uh, but I really have no, and I would, I, I would want your opinion here, I, I really have no bias about what happens from there. I mean, do we actually, do you think we, we will actually make it above that high? Do you think that, uh, I, actually, I remember that you were bearish, but, you know, it doesn't look yes. like bearish to me. I was expecting, I was tracking this ABC recovery, but this one is now very deep. As you can see, we are approaching this 113 level. So it's still some kind of a do or die zone. Okay, I don't want to be too fast to changing uh, to a bullish view, but um, we have to consider that there is a chance that we will come down after all, if we will see maybe some aggressive, not just a corrective pullback on, on stocks, but maybe something deeper than clearly um, dollar yen could, could come much more lower but definitely for this count to be confirmed I would have to see a break below this trend line support okay uh, within wave C so connected up from uh, September 12 so if we break this so trend line, to summarize you also don't have a very high conviction about it but oh, your okay. main thesis remains that it's going to fail from there initially right yes and since this week I'm tracking actually another wave count here so as you know firstly i was looking for potential wave d top here but now since we are moving quite aggressively higher again testing this trend line right there okay i just think and must be prepared on potential more upside here so that's why i'm considering maybe that this wave d is going to be a little bit more higher than i thought okay so i'm tracking this one as my second count where we may see a break higher into wave C actually from a running triangle that was maybe already completed for wave B. Okay, so the, if we consider that a triangle, where is the, the triangle's target? Up there at 117. Yes, but I would also add, uh, so just a second, 61.8% um, of that move. I don't know why I'm having some issues here. Let me check. 
Okay, 61.8% would be the first one, around 114.50, which is also... Which is also previous highs, a lot of previous highs up there. Yeah. So that would be first levels and then watch out for it, move into second. But of course, it's still a little bit early to confirm this wave count uh, unless we see a very decisive break above the previous uh, highs from July and make an important daily close above that level. Then I would go for it. But until then, I'm just observing two different possibilities because based on this price action, I just don't have a real confident feel, to be honest. So, Okay. Absolutely understood. I think that um, also, uh, I wanted to look at the euro dollar. So give me another five minutes. Um, so absolutely. I know that a lot of traders, I also posted um, two, way, two different interpretations on Twitter today and asked what they uh, mean if maybe we'll see a move continuation to the upside on euro dollar towards. 1.2, or are we going to see another drop towards 115? And there were 80% of traders right at the top who, who replied that we are going to see more upside. And actually, I would not be That's surprised. A good to see, <laughs> yes, to see our reversal lower, especially because we, as I can see right now, we spiked only temporary above the previous swing high resistance levels. Okay, so. Uh, still, if you will try to count this as an impulsive reaction, you will have some difficult times here. So I still favor that we are in a consolidation way B and that we will see another drop and then a reversal to the upside. Of course, I can be wrong here, but that's my best interpretation, especially when it comes to trading, because another drop would make a lot of confusion uh, even more uh, in these markets based on current very choppy price move if I can say. Um, and in such case, I would really pay for longs if we get a drop towards 50 or 61.8%. And also what I'm looking at is gold. Gold is coming down, as you can see, very strongly. And I think that this wave B is still not done yet. Okay. And that we will see a retest of 1,182. Uh, level which is around 61.8 percent so i think that this is just a way big consolidation maybe this will help your door to come a little bit lower i don't know uh what is the real reason for current very strong sell-off as i can see in gold i say you have you seen anything in the wires that might i have not no it's just one of the typical uh <laughs> out of the blue yeah. smashes yeah no i haven't seen anything i'm sorry and it doesn't look like the dollar is doing much. No, the dollar is very steady. Yeah, it's, it, it seems to be isolated as a, as a gold move, yeah. Yes, but uh, it's probably a confirmation because gold is not that strong. So if you want to see a break higher on the euro dollar, you would probably want to see gold also somewhere at least around those previous swing highs. But we are now uh, much more lower and it's end of the week. So I really would not be surprised if we see more weakness zero dollar during the u.s session today and then maybe really we, we get another lag down next week on euro before we complete this corrective with the patterns also cable is not uh, showing any evidences of a strong pound in in fact i think that we could see much lower prices here we yeah, are that was a very strong rejection wasn't it today yes. i mean yes and also we are now breaking this Right on Friday, uh, this trend line support of a potential ending diagonal or just wedge if you want. So, you know, that downside uh, is there's a lot of room actually for this downside. And you know something, after, after uh, I was monitoring this as an ascending, I mean, I was monitoring the whole recovery um, as, as an ascending channel. And we finally broke above that channel yesterday. And I got fooled about it because I had an initial target. I have a small long, and I had I had an initial target of 133. So you know, we we actually made it there. But I was enthusiastic by the fact that we actually uh, over, saw an overthrow from this ascending channel. So you know, my first thought yesterday was like, okay, this is cool because perhaps now we get a lot of people uh, covering their short positions, and that might actually uh, help the pair extend. Uh, the rebound even higher than I initially expected, perhaps towards 136. So I should probably keep my position and not book my profits at 133 as uh, you know I was initially targeting. 
and now one day later we are actually getting a candle that so far in in essence is completely um invalidating what we got yesterday and that is a very bad signal so i want to see how the um, the day is going to end but it doesn't look good yes and you know what you really like i don't know if you were here two weeks back when i talked about this i said that cable two weeks back that cable could recover seven six hundred to seven hundred pips move based on the past cycles where we also have seen lags yeah, I remember you saying that. 700 pips. And yeah. this was exactly the same lag from where we sold off. So I don't know if this is just a surprise, but definitely something to work to keep an eye on. So definitely based on the sh four hour uh, price action here, based on current very strong reversal right on Friday, which means that we will probably uh, see some very bearish candlestick formation or at least dodgy at the highs on a weekly basis so definitely i would consider more weakness into the next week yeah makes sense mate That's it so. absolutely makes sense um what, what else do you have your eyes set on i mean what, uh, what, what are your favorite uh, more clean uh, setups at the moment? Um, euro as a, okay. Okay, so Euro Aussie clearly, you know, we are in uptrend. I think it's just a matter of time when we will see um, these 2015 highs broken. I'm tracking here uh, an impulse in progress, and this actually continuation, this impulse could continue soon if we consider that the recent decline was in three waves. Okay, this was an ABC setback right into the previous wave for support, right? Yeah, into it was perfect. And we are now turning slightly to the upside. So we we'll see how, again, how market will close today. If we can stay um, around or push a little bit higher to, towards uh, 6190 or a little bit higher, then I think that uh, next lag is coming here for a fifth wave, maybe even with a 300 pips move. So maybe we'll still see Euro dollar coming down, Aussie dollar coming down as well. Uh, but maybe Aussie will just see a sharper decline or we'll see what will happen. But definitely this is uh, a very constructive pattern that can take us higher. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, we covered, you know, go, uh, any other metal that you have um, uh, your eyes on? For example, we're seeing a nice recovery in copper, which also, uh, you know, fits well the possible scenario of of a larger rebound yeah you know something this is what we haven't talked about uh two two things i, I want us to have a look together one Bitcoin. uh Bitcoin. use the card <laughs> it's still it's still <laughs> uh use the card still looks correct to me in nature and I, i'm seeing a very nice confluence of supports at 128.50 so you know i wanted to, to to get your opinion do you think that you know it's going to torment us a little bit longer uh you know in this manner that it has been doing or do you think that it might be um you know closer to to the, to the face that it actually uh moves high from here last week as you know i was bullish on dollar cat i thought that we already bottomed here because of a nice aggressive recovery but i was wrong on that one it looks like that this was just a tricky abc flat correction for wave x so yes i think that this could be a worry uh, long and complex but still corrective pullback down from Ju uh, june highs so yes, so far the structure does look correct there's no question about it it's definitely yeah, so this is the first lag that uh, we were tracking the zigzag and now i'm looking for something similar to unfold here in the second part okay so what i see is wave a we get wave b rally and then another sell off down for a wave c so uh, here's daily chart. I think that we may see a retracement even towards 50% of the previous rise. And this was also a wave for uh, support here. And also it's good to mention, like Blake said, uh, we have this trend line support coming in, maybe around current levels or, or a little bit lower, but definitely there is uh, enough of room to see lower test of the support before we turn to the upside. So I'm still longer term, I still think the dollar cat could uh, appreciate, but this current cycle from June highs appears incomplete. And I think we may see lower prices tested first. 
Okay, uh, one more question that I have, and then we have a few questions from, uh, two, three questions from uh, the audience uh, that I can transfer to you. Uh, my question is, Aussie uh, USD, Kiwi USD, both of them, very near critical resistance areas, in my opinion. For example, uh, Aussie, um, uh, Aussie has been trading since the very first of the year in a descending channel, uh, at least the way I have drawn it on my charts. Um, and, and today we seem to be testing uh, that channel's uh, resistance. What happens from here, in your opinion? Uh, when I look at the daily chart here, okay, I was preparing myself for a reversal for some time. By, uh, by the way, so, sorry to interrupt, I know that you've drawn everything there according to your Elliott Wave approach, which makes sense, that's what you do. But I have to, to stress out here because it's, you know, from a technical perspective, it's, it's, it's very nicely looking. If you take the whole move lower, it channels perfectly. So if you take that, that peak that we have, yeah, that one. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm actually monitoring this. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, you know, I consider this here. Break. Yes. So yeah. I actually, I I was considering a reversal or a low in place, but I'm still considering. But uh, I haven't put out together, um, sent out together any bullish interpretation, bullish count yet, because I see only free wave recovery from the lows. And today we slow down right at wave C to wave A equality level. So it's it would be very dangerous for me to turn bullish at these prices okay i still have to wait a little bit more and maybe should also pay a lot of attention to your daily trend line resistance as you said because it came in exactly at the same levels right um, we are now testing this trend line and also wave c equals to wave a up there so i think it's still a little bit early but if we see a continuation higher next week more importantly if we break above this former swing highs from August 21st, I think, uh, then that's a sign that something different is brewing there. That, yeah. that we have a low in place after all. So I'm just um, watching this uh, for more evidences to confirm um, the upcoming direction, actually. But I think that sooner or later, we will see a little bit higher prices for an ABC pullback, either from here or from a new low, I think that we will see a solid recovery. Okay, we also have two questions um, that both of them involve the uh, pound. One of them is about the euro pound, what's your view on that? And the other one is about pound yen. Uh, pound yen, I think the pound yen is very similar actually to cable at this stage. We have seen a very strong recovery um so far we have a free wave movement to the upside but what uh i would really like to pay attention on is not uh, a major reversal back to the downside but only i would pay attention to this five wave movement okay so if we ignore this abc rise okay i would pay attention to an abc pullback so if someone want to be on the short side bound Okay, then watch out for this structure. I would keep an eye on a wave B rise and then uh, be aware of more weakness, maybe even short term set for uh, for this yeah. wave. Speaking B speaking of which, let let me point out to another technical uh, formation here in the pound yen. If you can switch to a weekly chart of the pound yen, <clears throat> weekly. Okay. okay. If you see from the top of wave C, the, the red C that you have, that high that we actually found in 2017, that you have C on top of it, the red C. Um, if you draw a parallel from that one, if you draw a trend line from, from, yeah, yes, exactly. We are failing here, yes. Not only that, now clone this. If you ignore a little bit the lower wig, you'll see that it more or less channels. So, you know, I'm I'm a little bit skeptical here. First of all, in the short term, there is no question we're on resistance. So buying up here makes zero sense. But yes. on the other hand, 
doesn't this on the wiki chart look likely like a bullish correction? I mean, it looks to me like a formation that would actually break to the upside and, 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 and produce more upside. So I'm a little bit torn in the medium to long term what's going to happen from here. What do you think? It, it's possible. In such case, I would mark this as a wave X. Okay, but even if this and is then a, another ABC for yes, reason, right? a correction, and if I would have to label this a little bit differently, I would label this. If I uh, just a second, I would label this as a ABC, and then another ABC, and that would be wave X. So. Even in such case, I would probably... You would still expect more downside. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's see. Let's see. And one, one thing is for but sure... For the short term, the most important, as you said yourself, is the short term structure. We yeah, have seen up here a sure. five wave movement on an intraday chart. So at least three wave setback is now in progress. And the yeah. first lag that we are seeing right now, which is very strong, is clearly impulse. So either it's a wave one or it's a wave A, we should get more weakness after wave B or wave two box. Absolutely. Perfect. Let me see if there are any more questions. Uh, oh yeah, um, we have a friend here wanting your opinion. I, I had a look at it before uh, on the USD Swiss uh, as well. Okay. Um, Personally, after breaking 96.50, uh, I have my eyes set for 94.50. I don't know if you have some other level in mind. We are, you know, weekly it's ugly structure, but it's it is very ugly. ugly. Yeah. Then we know it's maybe uh, it was a correction, and we will continue higher. And why I love the upside is because this was a free wave decline, and this was a very strong rise, which can be first leg of a much more higher prices. And the wave two, if this is wave two, is now at sitting at 61.8%. So we still have to see a response from that level. I have to see a bounce. So if we see a bounce in boozy fashion back above or back towards uh, 98, then I think that. Uh, yeah, 97, 50, in my opinion, very critical level. I, I will be much more comfortable in, in calling a resumption to the upside once we clear that level. Until that point, I believe that we can even dip a little bit lower towards 94.50, perhaps. That, that's my point of view. I was actually, to be very honest about the USD Swiss, I was expecting that the correction would be much more shallow than the one we ended up seeing. So I expected USD Swiss to find support quite earlier than it did. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is, right? Yes, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Gregor, thank you very much for being here, especially on your birthday. I, unfortunately, I, ha I don't have the singing talent of Dale to sing it for you, but I really hope you enjoy the weekend with the family. Uh, you know, thank you for enlightening us one, once again. Uh, if everybody wants to have Gregor's point of view every day, you know what you have to do. This is your opportunity. We have until the end of the month. Um, you know, um, an offer, our new season offer in Forex Analytics. So go ahead and uh, take it up and subscribe and you, you will be able to know what Greg is thinking on a daily basis. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a lovely weekend and we'll be here on Monday. There is a very good chance that Dale is going to be healthy enough to actually uh, be back on Monday. That's, that's what he's aiming for. So let's cross our fingers because we've missed him and the interviews. Um, so see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.